Hello and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Sheena Peril, an author and crafter. It's been a hot minute since I did an entry in the Author Diaries series. I've basically taken the first half of 2023 off for my health. I'm still writing, designing, and obviously making videos. But due to chronic fatigue and some other issues, I'm just not able to produce at the scale I would like, and I haven't been able to meet deadlines. Eventually, I'll be talking about this more in a general health update, but I'm waiting until I've heard back from the remaining two specialists I need to see. Anyway, on top of all that, I've been spending a lot of time working at home. I was laid off in 2021 and have been temping ever since, but I've been having a dry spell this month and it's been about six weeks since my last placement. On the one hand, this is really good because it's given me time to heal and rest and deal with some family stuff, but it also sucks from a financial standpoint. <laughs> but all that free time means that I finally have some spoons that I can use for things like weekly videos and writing. I recently organized my desk, so I thought I would give you a look around. It's changed drastically since the last time I showed you my workspace. For starters, the desk itself is different. The blue one from my old writing setup video just wasn't working for me anymore. I needed more storage and a deeper workspace. I got this one secondhand from OfferUp, which is an app that's kind of like Facebook Marketplace. I paid about $20 and added casters to each of the legs. The casters are important because we have baseboard heating and this raises the desk enough to allow for some airflow, as well as making it easier to move when we eventually leave this apartment. It also allows me to push in my desk chair a little easier and raises the work surface to a more comfortable height. The chair was also secondhand and I got it from the ReStore. I love the cane detail on the back and eventually I'll get around to making a new cushion cover. It's also remarkably comfortable, even when I'm working here for several hours at a time. It has been a little noisy lately, but I just need to find the WD-40. I'm just not sure where it's at at the moment. On the desktop, we've got my book stand with my planner on it. I usually have this planner open to what needs to be done that day, but I can also use this for propping up outlines or notes or other writing related things, and I have 100% used it to hold my book or tablet so I can read while I knit or crochet. The candle and crystals aren't usually on my desk, they're on the windowsill beside it, but I'm making a video so it's aesthetic. This notebook in the corner is just a catch-all and if I need to write something down at random. I also tend to write down how I want to time block my day or put notes to myself in there because my brain is a sieve. My chronic illness causes a lot of short-term memory problems and I was recently diagnosed with ADHD, so anything quick that I don't want to hold on to in my planner goes here. This mat came from Amazon and was pretty cheap. I like it, but I'm thinking about replacing it with one of those giant mouse pads. I just haven't figured out what design I want yet. This laptop stand is a recent addition. It also came from Amazon and it's been so nice to raise up my laptop screen and it gives me more surface area to work on with my desk when I want to handwrite something. My keyboard was a Christmas present from my mom, but it also came from Amazon. It's nice and clicky, and I love it. It fits nicely under the laptop when I want it out of the way. I will put links to as many things as I can down below. I'm not sponsored by anyone, I just really like some of these things. The TV is pretty old, but it still works. I use it as a second monitor when I'm writing, but I also use it and the DVD player here to watch movies since my laptop doesn't have an internal disk drive. You can see my current watch resting on the DVD player. Fletchley Circle, San Francisco. Here I have my bat stitch mug with my most used pens in it, pencil and scissors. If you've been here for any length of time, you know how much I love stitch. I also have a problem with mugs, so I have a lot of them randomly scattered through my room holding small things, especially if they aren't dishwasher safe, like this one. Because what is the point of a ceramic mug if it isn't dishwasher safe? This bulletin board is where I put yarn labels, that way I know what I'm working with when I write up my podcast notes. I sometimes put other things there too. Now for the insides. Let's start over here on the left. 
in this top drawer, I have all of my hand warmers, my wrist braces if it's a really bad day, and my French flashcards that I'm ashamed to say I made and then never studied. There's been a lot going on lately, and I just haven't had the bandwidth for self-studying a language. This box has all of my fountain pen supplies. I love my fountain pens, but so often a gel pen is just faster and easier. I do use fountain pens at work though. I found that they confused my coworkers and they were less likely to walk off with my favorite pen. Drawer number two is mostly drawing and writing supplies. I got this basket at the thrift store and it has extra flashcards, glue sticks, that sort of thing, and more of these Ipsy cosmetic bags. I had a subscription for a long time, so I have a ton of these, and I tend to use them as pencil cases or to store things like stickers. This pencil case is my colored pencils and my most used planner stuff, like markers, whiteout, scissors, that kind of thing. If you want to see a more detailed look at my everyday carry stuff, leave a comment down below. This big pouch has my brush pens and markers, and underneath it I have a caddy with my sticky notes, eraser, glue, and refills for my gel pens. The bottom drawer is a little random. It's right next to the heater, so I want to make sure nothing in there will get damaged, even though we don't run the heat in this room very often. On top we have a couple of disc-bound notebooks. One is a story I'm working on sporadically, and the other is my French notebook. I also have a crochet project in here. This is my Wednesday Adam sweater, and I work on it while I'm editing or waiting for things to upload. Other than that, it's just happy planner punches. This middle drawer is another random one. I keep stuff that I reach for a lot in here. On top I have my unemployment notebook, where I write down everything related to my job search, and then this big disbound is kind of a catch-all. It's got some story starts in it, research, it's about as random as the drawer. These two pouches are things like nail clippers, nail file, that kind of thing. Hand care stuff that makes it more comfortable to write. I've also got my little stress starfish, alas, the shop that made that has since closed, and a ruler. Binder clips, like I said, this drawer is pretty random. The rest of the stuff in here is, again, pretty random, stuff I just don't know what to do with. On the right hand side, I've got a drawer where I keep all of my most used gadgets and cords. Travel keyboard for my tablet, cable for transferring video to my laptop, that kind of thing. I've also got a lighter in here for my candles, headphones, and a headphone cord. The drawer below that is more computer stuff. My switch usually lives here so it's out of the way, and then I've got the stuff I use less frequently. My mini photo printer, USB DVD drive, instructions for some of my lesser used tech, batteries, all that good stuff. The bottom drawer is where I keep all of my planner stickers, inserts, and ephemera. It looks messy, but I swear it's organized. If you want a full tour of my notebook and planner stuff, like this video or leave a comment below. Under the desk, I have an ottoman because I am constitutionally incapable of sitting with my feet flat on the floor. I like to prop them up, probably because for years the only space I had to work was in bed. Inside here I have all of my planners and notebooks. These are in use, and then the blank ones are on this side, and any of my larger notebooks are here. Again, if you want a full rundown of what I've got, please like or leave a comment. The lid on this ottoman flips over, so you can also use it as a sort of coffee table, which is great. I don't have room to do that in this room, but I'm hoping once we move, I'll have more space and can spread out more. This isn't really part of my desk, so I'm not doing a full tour here, but the secretary is another antique I bought secondhand. I keep all of my notes for the Eleonora project in here, and if I need some extra workspace, I'll fold down the writing surface, which is very handy, especially now that my desk has casters, so they are at the same height. I really like my desk, though it has been a challenge to set it up, mostly because of the placement of the heater and the window. I also really like the gallery wall above it, but I kind of wish I had a shelf or something there. But I also know that cats would be on that shelf in a hot minute, and it would be a very bad idea. So now that you've seen my workspace, what am I working on? Well, I'm slowly pecking away at the first draft of a book called 10,000 Golden Hearts, which is a horror fairy tale loosely based off of Snow White. 
And by loosely, I mean loosely. I started this book back in December, cranked out about 32,000 words in a couple of weeks, and then hit a wall in the new year and couldn't concentrate. That's when my health was at its worst and I just couldn't do anything. I was struggling just to function at half capacity, so I set the book aside for a couple of months, occasionally adding a hundred words here or there, and then decided for April's Camp NaNoWriMo I would try to finish the draft, about 20,000 words. I should mention that I'm an underwriter, which means I usually add about 20 to 30,000 words over the course of three drafts, rather than taking away 20 to 30k like most writing teachers recommend. I'm just finishing up the climax on this book now and getting into that wrap up at the very end of the book. I've already got some notes to myself of scenes I want to add. If you want to know more about my process, I do have an ebook up on Amazon that is free with Kindle Unlimited that's all about writing and publishing. You can also purchase it directly from me and my Gumroad shop if you're not a fan of Amazon. There are links down below. I don't have too much else to add, but if you'd like to stick around, we can do a 20 minute writing sprint. We'll see if I man manage to finish the draft.
I didn't finish it. I didn't think I would, but I did manage to add 722 words, wrapped up a scene. So I'm working on the falling action and the closing right now, and I'm up to 45,066 words total. So making some good progress, and hopefully I will be able to finish this book by the end of the month. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, or share, or all of the above. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope you have something soft and fluffy to cuddle with. Ciao!